Okay, let's unpack this. You've asked us to dive into sources exploring the U.S.-China dynamic in artificial intelligence. Right, specifically looking at an article examining China's AI strategy. Exactly. And, you know, here in the U.S., the common narrative, it's often framed as an arms race. We hear these uh, pretty strong warnings. Like J.D. Vance talking about potential enslavement. Yeah, that level of rhetoric. And former President Trump, remember, focused on deals to ensure American dominance in AI. So there's this clear sense in that view of a zero-sum game global dominance at stake? Mm -hmm. A high stakes race. So our mission in this deep dive then is to take these sources you shared and really unpack what they reveal about this perceived race. Especially focusing on China's perspective, right? Because the article suggests their approach might be well, fundamentally different from that American view we just talked about. Let's get into that American framing first as the sources lay it out. How is it described? Well, it strongly leans into this arms race idea, as you said. Yeah. The sources mention lobbying, for instance major tech leaders. Which ones? Think OpenAI, AMD, CoreWeave, Microsoft. Yeah. They're pushing for lighter regulation and linking AI development pretty explicitly to maintaining, you know, global hegemony. And the spending involved. Oh, it's massive. Yeah. The plans mentioned are, are huge, over a trillion dollars by 2030. A trillion, just for data centers. Just for the data centers needed for these AI models, yeah. Yeah. That's what the source indicates. Wow. And the core goal of this American push, according to the material, seems to be artificial general intelligence, AGI. That's right. There's this belief uh, that large language models, LLMs, they're approaching a kind of Rubicon moment. Meaning? Meaning they're on the cusp of matching or maybe even surpassing human cognitive abilities. The sources quote Sam Altman of OpenAI expecting the next step could be actual super intelligent systems. Super intelligence, okay. Yeah. And the thinking involves this potential takeoff moment. The idea that a model could start recursively improving itself, basically making itself smarter without us. Creating a decisive, almost uncatchable advantage. It sounds a bit like the thinking around the nuclear bomb development, historically. That, that comparison does come up in the sources. Right. They reference Barathirithus from CSIS, who points out that some American planners believe, and I'm quoting loosely here, the first country to secure the AGI laurel will usher in the 100-year dynasty. A 100-year dynasty. So the stakes feel existential. Absolutely. And those export controls on semiconductors, the article notes, they're explicitly intended to make sure China comes second in this this race for AGI. Okay. So that's one side of the picture, a very high stakes, almost utopian race, you could say, for a single breakthrough moment leading to global dominance. But your sources suggest China's operating differently. Yes. And this is really a central contrast highlighted in the material we looked at. Now, it's not completely uniform. Well, you do have some entrepreneurs in China, like DeepSeek's founder, Liang Wenfang, who definitely share that AGI-focused ambition. Mr. Liang even met with Prime Minister Li Kang, apparently. Okay, so the ambition exists there, too. It does. But the government, and many key figures cited, seem to be pushing a, a distinct strategy, a different drumbeat, perhaps. And how does that strategy differ? What's the focus? It seems less about that abstract idea of superhuman AGI and much more about um, practical applications. Putting AI to work now. In what way? Experts and party officials mentioned in the article, like Zhang Yakin from Tsinghua University, they emphasize applying AI in factories for consumers. Sort of like how China surged ahead in e-commerce and mobile payments. Exactly like that. The sources suggest it echoes that playbook. Even the Politburo, in its study session on AI, reportedly focused on integrating it into everyday uses, describing it more like uh, electricity, a foundational utility. Not a single magic bullet weapon. Precisely more a tool to be widely adopted. So when they talk about AGI in China, are they even using the term the same way? That's a key point from the sources. Apparently not always. The term Tongyong Rangong Zhenang, which mm. often gets translated as AGI, well, it typically refers more to general purpose AI. Meaning AI for lots of different tasks. Yes, designed for multiple applications across different industries. It doesn't necessarily carry that same Western connotation of a self-improving, potentially superhuman system. Interesting. And there's also some noted skepticism cited among Chinese researchers, like Wu Zhaohui from a state think tank, about whether current LLMs can really reason like humans yet. And their timeline for AGI, is it different? It seems so. Mr. Zhang from Sinqua is quoted stating that Chinese experts generally expect AGI, whatever form it takes, to arrive further off than many of their American counterparts believe. Right. 
Carson Elmgren of RAND is referenced and offers a really neat summary of this difference. He says something like, while American tech leaders often frame AI with these grand utopian aspirations, China's government seems more focused on using it to solve concrete problems. Like what? Like boosting economic growth, upgrading industries, real world stuff. This focus is apparently quite tangible in their new AI Plus campaign. AI Plus, like the earlier Internet Plus. Exactly the model. Hmm. It was mentioned in the annual work report. It prioritizes firms that successfully adopt AI in their existing operations, even in physical places, like factories using robots. It's explicitly meant to mimic that Internet Plus campaign, which, you know, really kicked off their digital consumer economy. That focus on practical, widespread application, it makes a lot of sense from an economic development perspective, doesn't it? It does. Are there other reasons cited in the sources for why China might favor this approach rather than just going all in on the AGI race? Yeah, the sources point to some very practical realities. There's an acknowledged shortage of, well, top-tier AI talent, and critically, a shortage of the most advanced chips needed for those cutting-edge models. The U.S. export control is playing a role there. Presumably. The article quotes someone admitting China has a gap in basic theory and key core technologies. These are real constraints. They make a direct head-to-head -head race based purely on, you know, throwing computing power at building the biggest models. Well, it makes that very difficult. So it's a strategy that kind of works with the constraints they face. Maybe. Yes, exactly. That's how it's framed. Liu Xion of Tsinghua University is quoted drawing a comparison to Mao Zedong's On Protracted War. How does that analogy work? The idea is that a weaker opponent, strategically, can tire out a stronger one, not by meeting force with force everywhere, but through strategic positioning, exploiting different avenues. The goal isn't necessarily to build the single biggest first model right away. But maybe to outlast or outmaneuver. That seems to be the thinking. Pang Ji, also from Tsinghua, argues in the party journal Kishi for China to position itself as a fast follower of American innovation. A fast follower meaning let the U.S. invent, then China adapts. Sort of. But focusing specifically on being cheaper and quicker at creating widespread applications from those innovations, that's where they aim to excel. Okay, so given these constraints and this focus on application and maybe being a fast follower, how does China actually plan to compete in the long run? The forces seem to suggest a kind of two-pronged strategy emerging from this. That's a good way to put it. Two prongs. The first one seems aimed squarely at undercutting any monopoly the U.S. might try to build with its most advanced models. How would they do that? The idea mentioned is to replicate Western innovations relatively quickly, maybe not perfectly, but good enough, and then release the core data, the model weights, as open source. Give it away? Essentially, yes. DeepSeek has apparently already done this with some of their models. The thinking here, according to the sources, is that the real value generated by AI, it won't just be captured by whoever builds the absolute best foundational model first. But by who uses it best? Exactly. By those who are most effective at applying these models widely across the economy, making them useful. And how does building that application layer create a long-term advantage for China? Well, Kai-Fu Li is quoted arguing that by the time a theoretical AGI breakthrough might arrive, China's goal is to already have, quote, robust social applications, search engines, agents, and hardware in place. So build the ecosystem first. Right. By focusing on building those applications now, getting users, accumulating data specific to their market, they can create what Lee calls moats, barriers to entry. Moats, like defensive barriers. Barriers that Western competitors, even if they eventually arrive with technically superior underlying models, will struggle to cross because China will already own the user relationship, the data, the localized applications. He uses TikTok as an example of building that kind of moat globally. Okay, so prong one is about diffusion, application, ecosystem building, basically making AI pervasive and sticky in their economy, potentially using open source to level the playing field on foundational models. What's the second prong? The second prong is maybe a bit more speculative. It involves exploring moonshots that could potentially bypass America's huge trillion dollar bet on the current large language model path altogether looking for a different route entirely. Exactly. Zhu Song Chen from the Beijing Institute for General Artificial Intelligence is quoted. He basically says that if China only follows the American approach focusing solely on computing power, algorithms deployment, they'll likely always remain followers. So they need to find their own path. That's the idea. They're looking for entirely different pathways to advanced AI. The sources mentioned the Shanghai government, for instance, 
funding researchers looking into alternative architectures. What kind of alternatives? Things that don't just rely on scaling up the current LLMs. The sources mentioned areas like uh, models that can interact directly with the real world through imagery. Like robots that see and react? Sort of, yes. Hmm. Also, systems for mind-computer control are mentioned, and even really fundamental theoretical algorithms trying to actually emulate the structure and function of the human brain more closely. Wow, okay. That sounds ambitious. It is. It's an explicit effort, it seems, to find a breakthrough outside the dominant Western paradigm. We may find a more efficient, less resource-intensive path to advanced capabilities. Here's where it gets really interesting. These completely different bets being placed. Right. It's not just one race. So we have this American focus on the AGI prize via massive LLMs, and then China focusing on practical diffusion and ecosystem building with current tech, while also exploring these novel alternative paths. What do the sources say about potential outcomes or implications of these contrasting approaches? Well, there's an IMF study referenced. It suggests AI could actually boost America's economy more significantly in the near term, say, the next 10 years. More than China's. Why? Potentially 5.6% growth boost for the U.S. versus 3.5% for China. The reasoning mentioned is partly because China has a smaller services sector relative to manufacturing. So even if AI diffuses rapidly in factories, the overall national economic gain might be capped compared to the potential impact on a service-heavy economy like the U.S. Okay, so that sounds maybe like a point in favor of the American approach, at least for immediate national economic growth figures. Potentially, in the short term, perhaps. But there's an important warning flagged in the article coming from Jensen Huang, the NVIDIA boss. What did he warn about? He cautioned that if American firms don't find ways to actively compete within China's growing AI ecosystem, the applications, the platforms, then Chinese technology and leadership in those areas could, quote, diffuse all around the world. Ah, so even if the U.S. has the best foundational model, if China dominates the application layer globally. That could become the de facto standard. It brings us right back to that application focus, doesn't it? It really does. And the article uses Apple as a concrete example. Hmm. Apparently, Apple is seeing its revenue decline in China, partly because customers there now expect integrated AI services in their devices, services Apple doesn't currently offer natively. So Apple needs a local AI partner in China. That's what the source suggests they need to do to reverse the trend. But then there are these reports that the U.S. government might potentially block that kind of partnership. Which creates a dilemma for Apple. Exactly. And the potential risk highlighted is broader. Without developing and offering these localized, practical AI applications, American tech products, even premium ones like the iPhone, could risk becoming also RANs in China. And potentially elsewhere over time if China exports its application ecosystem. That's the implication raised, even if the foundational U.S. models are technically superior on paper. So what does this all mean then? Stepping back, your sources paint a picture that's, well, it's far more nuanced than just a simple linear arms race for a single AGI prize, isn't it? Absolutely. What's fascinating here, I think, is how it highlights two fundamentally different philosophies or maybe bets in play. You have the American narrative, as described in these sources, often focused on this abstract, potentially world-changing race for a single superhuman breakthrough. The AGI laurels leading to dominance. Right. The belief that getting that first changes everything. And then if we connect this to the bigger picture, China's strategy, as presented in the material, seems much more centered on the practical, widespread diffusion of AI tools that exist now. Getting AI into factories, onto phones, into daily life. Exactly. Building that ecosystem from the ground up, making it indispensable, while also kind of quietly on the side, exploring these alternative, maybe more efficient paths to advanced AI that could bypass the current resource-heavy LLM race. It really raises a big question for you, the listener, to consider, based on these contrasting approaches presented in the sources, what kind of AI future is truly being built here? Mm -hmm. And whose strategy, the all-out race for a single, perhaps distant superintelligence, or the strategy of widespread diffusion of practical tools, combined with exploring entirely new architectures, which one might ultimately have the most profound impact? Not just on who wins some geopolitical contests, but on the world economy, on daily life for everyone in the long run. It's certainly something to mull over based on the perspectives your sources shared with us today.